So we are here at DS and we're going to be convened over the next three days. We've got about 30 people coming from eight different countries and cities across the continent, across the African continent. And the idea for this workshop came about because we recognize that the, we recognize the need for intersectoral partnership and collaboration to um, really start thinking about sustainable prevention of non pupil diseases. Because there isn't a single issue that affects humans that's unidimensional. Um, every issue that affects humans has multiple facets, multi prongs, multiple dimensions. It is incumbent for us to have to work together in order to address the issues that, that human beings face. I believe in the 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 the, the issue of, of positive deviance. Uh, I believe that there are good practices everywhere. Um, in the worst situations, people find um, positive ways of dealing with the situation. We actually brought to the forefront that we actually need to be intentional in the interventions that we do to, in order to address um, not communicable diseases and not just assume that by giving a person a house you are addressing the health element. So. It's been a great opportunity because it has opened my eyes in terms of the benefits of the collaboration. As we say through a lot of frameworks and you know whether it's socio-ecological or social determinants of health, our well-being is shaped by the places that we play, the places where we school, where we work, where we pray, and is in those settings that a lot of what ends up being our health trajectory is shaped across our lifespan. Secondly, we recognize that in the context of rapid urbanization, we really need to think about the city as a system that can be pivoted for health. We are all at risk, and um, the impact of everything that we do from all sectors would be able to get us in, on the right path of uh, sustainable development or in the negative direction. So we don't have an option. That is the take home that I have. Uh, from this workshop. If we can think proactively about how we're designing where people live, we're designing um, the direction that cities are going more intentionally instead of just haphazardly, then we have a big opportunity to um, create a society where people can thrive. And when people can thrive, then we can really have that potential that Africa has. Africa has a huge po young population, and I think we can take advantage of it if we're proactive about planning the cities that they're going to live in. Right now, in a developing climate action plan for Lagos State, we have been able to prioritize three high impact areas, which are waste management, transportation, and energy generally. So in a way, the bottom line for what we are doing is to see also how we can, apart from reducing emissions, to harvest the co-benefits. For instance, if you reduce emission, it has impact on air quality. And for us to really make the desired impact, it's important to bring all uh, stakeholders together, which is essentially what this particular work work workshop is all about. So, in a way, it's like we are using one stone to kill multiple birds, and for me, that's the way to go. Well, we believe that uh, intersectoral work is at the core of what we do, uh, dealing with the upstream environmental determinants of health and particularly in the urban environment, in the urban context. There's no other way around solving the challenges of rapid urbanization other than getting together with different stakeholders, different sectors, different knowledges uh, to solve these problems and make sure that we deliver on healthier urban environments. Uh, through these uh, activities. Hmm. Uh, from this workshop, I, I learn a lot. Uh, 
because uh, firstly I, I share experience with uh, actors of different countries. So I've seen uh, many examples in other towns which are interesting for my city uh, and I also learn about tools, tools for integrated health in urban planning because I'm first an urban planner and uh, I think that uh, this, uh, these tools uh, should be very interesting to, to be also a policy for a good health in, uh, in Douala. And thirdly, we recognise that people are actually starting to think and do these um, initiatives already. But yet, the different cities are isolated and not, don't have the space to learn from each other. It's the roles of academic to glue a gel between different sectors and also be a catalyst for the intersectoral action rather than the authority talking to one another. And just through bringing in us as academics and trying to find models in which we can collaborate with, with government stakeholders, it's, it's a good way to open up conversations around um, urban health and identify real life challenges that are currently going on in the, in the local context and working alongside our government uh, stakeholders to, yeah, to find ways in which we can address particularly health in informal settlements in Cape Town. And so being part of this intersectoral conference has been amazing because health is just one of the kind of sub agendas or sub benefits of our program and this has allowed us to really think about how open streets can connect with others to create the impact that we hope for. Um, when we look at resilience, it has some qualities. It has um, seven qualities of resilience, of which integration is one, meaning working across institutions and systems so that you break the silos and everybody works together for a common good. So intersectoral collaboration that we're talking about fits in perfectly as in with the principles and responsibilities of the organization. I'll leave you with this quote. That all of life is interrelated and that we all caught in an escapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all. And for me, this quote really emphasizes why we're here. Because it's not about what can I do? Oh, I need to eat better and then I'm done. Um, it doesn't matter what way, whether we see ourselves as individual. A society is only as developed as what it does with its most vulnerable. How do we think about these interrelations between different aspects of, of, of society? And how do we work in a systematic and um, coordinated way to try to improve with the state of